This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. Chapter 15 deals with the recruitment and selection process. Uh, recruitment and selection uh, for many organisations has become a more difficult area. It's a very crucial area. Uh, human resources are resources, they are scarce. It, it can be increasingly difficult uh, to get people with the right qualifications, especially as many jobs are becoming more technically demanding. Human resources are also the only resource of the company which uh, kind of leaves company premises every evening uh, and is not guaranteed to come back uh, and indeed might voluntarily relocate itself to a competitor. Uh, that's not, in, by and large, going to happen with uh, desktop computers or machinery and so on. What we have to do uh, is to define uh, the requirements of the organisation. This will be tied in, it should be tied into the organisation's long-term plans. Uh, how much does it hope to expand by? Uh, what sort of areas is it going to go into? This will define the number of recruits needed and the sort of skills they have. Uh, they have to uh, define the requirements precisely, then they have to attract a reasonable number of applicants uh, from which they can select uh, the uh, uh, lucky person or people who are going to be employed. The uh, first uh, part of uh, recruitment and selection, once one has an idea of how many people you might need and uh, so on, uh, is to find out what the job is. This is a job analysis. And uh, I might think that people will know what a job is, uh, but you can't always tell that from the job title. So, for example, if you uh, were talking about somebody who was an accounts assistant, that title accounts assistant means very different things in different organisations. In some organisations, it's somebody who's going to be just doing debits and credits to the receivables ledger. In another organization, it might be somebody who's heavily involved with budgeting. Uh, in some organizations, this person would have no subordinates. Uh, in very large organization, an accounts assistant, even at assistant level, might have a couple of assistant assistants and so on. Uh, does not involve talking to customers, does not involve liaising closely with the finance director and so on. And so the process of job analysis is to find out exactly what is in the job uh, and sometimes this is done by asking the current holder of the job, if they haven't left yet, uh, to keep a, a little timesheet uh, recording how many hours they spend on uh, doing accounting, how many hours they spend on liaising with customers, how many hours they spend on budgeting, and, and, and so on. And this is used, uh, this is a, basically a research uh, area, this is used to uh, draw up the job description which is basically the content of the job, uh, a picture of what this person will be doing. And from the job description, uh, you can get to a person specification. Uh, and the person specification is uh, really defining the sorts of qualities a successful person would have uh, to be able to fulfill the job description. This. Uh, acronym bad pigs comes from something called Rogers seven point uh, uh, selection plan uh, which at least shows us some of the uh, <coughs> personal ap uh, attributes and skills and so on uh, that, that people might be looking at when they go to uh, recruitment it's a little bit old-fashioned maybe in some in some of uh, uh, its areas uh, but it's 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 okay uh, it gives us an idea anyway of, of what we're looking at. And uh, the B, which we've got in here, it, it stands for somebody's background. This is uh, something that's probably the most old fashioned part of it here. Uh, what has somebody's background got to do with their ability to do the job? Uh, I can remember being. Uh, interviewed many, many years ago, uh, and I was asked by the interviewer uh, what my father did, uh, and, and I, I wasn't actually sure whether that was relevant to my job. Uh, there was, at, at one point, a kind of uh, feeling 
that if your uh, parents had been in what you might call middle class professional jobs, then this ideally suited the, the, the offspring, the child, to also be in kind of middle, middle class uh, uh, professional jobs and so on. We really have to be really very, very wary about inquiring too much into background. You might just get a little bit worried if somebody lived a couple of hundred kilometers away and they had to commute back and forwards every day. Uh, how would they actually manage to do that uh, all during the year, during winter and so on? Um, but uh, going much further is probably going to get you into some, some trouble. Uh, because if you take it much further, uh, then you're opening up the, the possibilities of uh, unfair discrimination against uh, candidates who may not be perfectly good. We're much safer on the next one. Uh, the next one is going to be achievement. Achievements. Uh, what qualifications do you have? Uh, do you have a degree? Have you got a professional qualification? Have you studied for two years at ACCA? What experience do you have, maybe with uh, current or former employers and so on? Uh, have you got a driving license? Because for some jobs, it's going to be important that you travel around to maybe customers uh, and you need a driving license. Uh, can you maybe speak German or something of, of, of that sort? So these are very legitimate, very important inquiries to be, to be making. D is disposition. This position is uh, really kind of looking at almost somebody's uh, personality. Uh, is a person uh, we are interviewing or looking at, uh, let's say that the, the job they're going to be doing is really a job where they are alone a lot of the time, they may be out, uh, like maybe an internal auditor, uh, out uh, uh, on their own, essentially without any of their uh, colleagues, investigating how different uh, areas of the business are conforming with internal control. And internal auditors are not always the most loved people. There's a, there's a feeling that uh, they're there to check up on you and to criticize you and so on. Uh, so if somebody's a very sociable person, uh, maybe a job where they're substantially on their own uh, might not suit them. Uh, if you're going to have somebody who is uh, on the reception desk or answering the phone, then you want the disposition to be relatively cheerful. Uh, you don't want somebody who's miserable uh, as being the first kind of uh, uh, impressions that visitors and customers have if they come to or from the office. P is physical. We have to be a little bit uh, careful about uh, physical requirements here. Again, uh, many countries have uh, legislation uh, which protects uh, say, people who may be disabled in, in some way. Uh, but some jobs have got legitimate physical requirements. Uh, for example, if you're going to be an airline pilot, uh, it's very important that you're not colorblind. Uh, otherwise, if you see the plane and it's red light and it's green light on each of its window, uh, their wings, uh, uh, and you don't know red from green, you don't know whether that plane's coming uh, towards you or going away from you. Uh, if, if it's a job where it's uh, heavy lifting involved and so on, uh, then maybe there's a kind of health and safety issue to make sure you don't employ someone who has maybe got a weak back uh, and going to be causing more, more difficulties. The I uh, we have here is interests. Uh, the interests of the, the person, almost their hobbies, uh, and this can be useful in um, interviews. It, it kind of breaks the, the ice a little bit. You can talk gently about the, their outside interests. Uh, it, it can also be used to give you insights into what that person's personality might be like. So somebody's interest, uh, they, tell, they, they tell you that they are the captain of a local soccer club. Uh, then you probably know they're fairly sociable. They're, there's evidence of certain um, uh, leadership skills in that. If, however, you have somebody who has a, a rather solitary interest, if they're a very keen uh, stamp collector or a bird watcher or something like that, uh, then a role where they have to be very sociable might not come naturally to them, but they might be very, very good at keeping uh, very detailed notes and records in the organization. 
G is general intelligence. Uh, if somebody comes with a degree in good qualifications, you would assume that they are uh, pretty intelligent. Uh, but for lower level jobs, uh, quite often people will not have very many formal qualifications. Uh, yet maybe they all have to undertake training, so from technical training for the job. Uh, and, and we have to make sure that they are in a way bright enough to be able to cope with the demands of the, the job. Uh, and finally, the S here, we have special aptitudes. Uh, best example maybe of special aptitudes is the people who are going to be heading towards uh, computer programming. Uh, it's uh, pretty well known uh, that uh, you have to have, that there, are, there are people with, with uh, uh, special aptitudes and being able to code very well and so on. Uh, and one of the things you can do with these special aptitudes, uh, we'll see shortly, is you could design aptitude tests. So as part of the uh, recruitment and selection process, uh, you try to work out if they're actually going to be suitable maybe to learning languages, computer programming, uh, and uh, what have you. What you would do is you would uh, draw up a pers person's specification. Uh, some of these attributes might be must-have, they must have a degree, they must have three years experience, they must have a driving license, and so on there. Others might be nice to have, it might be nice to speak German, and, uh, and so on. Uh, and, and the like. And when your candidates, first of all, apply and then you're interviewing them, the idea is you compare the candidates to this objectively obtained person specification. This is your best picture of what you need. Uh, you're likely to go astray if you kind of compare interviewee number one to interviewee number two to interviewee number three. Uh, if you're not careful, you come out of recruiting the person you like. Uh, rather than recruiting the person you need. Uh, ideally, you both like them and need them, uh, but it's very easy to be uh, kind of knocked off course. Uh, you end up recruiting the person you had a nice chatty interview with, uh, and then only after they've been in the job a few weeks do you, do you discover uh, that they're actually rather hopeless when it comes to doing the work you actually recruited them for. Advertising uh, uh, vacancies would uh, come come next. Uh, you can do this yourself. Uh, you can uh, advertise in uh, suitable newspapers, suitable periodicals. Uh, uh, internet is used a lot now to advertise jobs and so on. Uh, the adver advert has to be uh, worded uh, sufficiently well to describe the job uh, fairly accurately, uh, provide the information people need about what the job is, maybe what it pays and, uh, and, and so on. Uh, you have to uh, attract the interest of suitable candidates. Uh, you don't want the uh, advertisement to be so widely drawn up that you get kind of hundreds of applicants. Because that's uh, obviously not directed very well at the people you want. You don't want it very restrictively drawn up so you only get two or three applicants. And, uh, and so that doesn't give you enough choice. Uh, you maybe want to uh, phrase the advert so maybe you get 30 applicants. Uh, you can go through their application forms and then maybe you choose five out of the 30 to take further uh, and to um, interview. Apart from advertising yourself, uh, you can always go to a recruitment agency. Uh, recruitment agencies often have people on their books ready uh, and looking for a job. Uh, the recruitment agency has got all their qualifications collated and so on already, uh, and they can help you uh, maybe choose the right five people to be interviewing. Uh, recruitment agencies can also help you with getting the wording right, will, can also help you with uh, uh, suggesting proper salaries uh, for that sort of skill level and so on. Uh, but recruitment agencies are quite expensive. Typically, they will uh, charge about 25% of an annual salary, about three months' worth of salary on recruitment of, shall we say, ordinary employees. If it goes up to a highish uh, management level, it can go up to six months of annual salary. So it's not cheap. And we need to be uh, convinced that uh, what, uh, you know, they're going to do the job right is actually worth 
uh, going to these people uh, for the bother they save us. Selection methods. So we have our 30 applicants come in. We've weeded that down to five, uh, and uh, we're going to see. Uh, and you would definitely interview those five people. However, uh, remember that interviews are a very, very, uh, can be a very, very poor way of deciding who to recruit, uh, particularly if interviews are not done uh, in a very skilled way. Uh, so an example of uh, interview is going, kind of going badly uh, is if the interviewer just asks what's called closed questions. Uh, a closed question is one which is uh, only going to give you a yes or no answer uh, to it. So you ask somebody, uh, can you work Excel? They say yes, and that's kind of end of that conversation. You ask somebody, can you work under uh, conditions of uh, tight deadlines? You're going to say yes, and you're going to say no, and so on. Uh, it doesn't really draw people out. Uh, so what you want is what's called open questions. So uh, they say, uh, you say, can you work to strict deadlines? They say yes. Then you say, can you give me an example of a strict deadline and how you dealt with the pressures? how you uh, organized your team, how you persuaded people maybe to work a little bit longer and so on, uh, and really get them to, to open out. Other problems with interviews is things called halo effects, uh, that uh, if you're not careful, you make your mind up within about 20 seconds of first seeing someone. First, first impressions, if you like, tend to outweigh all the subsequent impressions that you might, uh, might be getting. Uh, in interviews, typically only maybe half an hour. Many people can put on a bit of an act in, in half an hour and so on. So it needs considerable skill to really uh, 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 get to, the, to, to, to how, how good people might be. Although you have to be careful not to be too aggressive. Uh, interviews are really a kind of two-way process. Uh, you don't want to be uh, interviewing people and, and to get a reputation. Uh, that, that you're, you're, you're pretty aggressive and horrible. Uh, you might offer these people a job and they, they'll say, no way, am I going to work there? Uh, they might uh, spread around their uh, friends and colleagues what an awful uh, rude time they had uh, there. So you don't want to bring your organization into disrepute. You can be firm without being aggressive. Uh, more and more, uh, at the interview stage, people are uh, going to be sitting um, selection uh, uh, tests of some sort. Selection tests uh, can be, first of all, uh, psychometric. You try to measure the person's uh, personality. You set a series of questions and uh, they're scored and you get uh, some idea of uh, how well that person is uh, to be uh, taking initiative, how well they're going to be into leading other people and so on. And these are really quite, uh, quite accurate uh, now, these psychometric testing. Proficiency is the second one. If somebody says uh, that they can uh, type on a word for Windows at 60 words per minute, uh, well, how long is it actually going to take, take to test their proficiency? Uh, set them down with a bit of text, see how long it takes them to, to, to type that up. If you get the wrong person recruited, it's actually very expensive. It's not so much uh, in expensive to get rid of them because most most uh, countries you don't get employment protection for a while it, it means you've wasted time uh, recruitment can be quite a long process uh, you get them in you, you let them stay there a month then you decide that they're, they're not really suitable and they have to go through that whole process again uh, and, and and you are, are not getting the, per, the, the person or the people you need intelligence tests uh, as I said under the the bad pigs if nobody has uh, no other real evidence of their intelligence, maybe you set uh, an intelligence test. Uh, and there are aptitude tests. Uh, I mentioned that when we are dealing with uh, uh, special aptitudes, we're dealing maybe with computer programmers. There are some firms of accountants who believe that they can give aptitude tests uh, to people who are going to succeed in uh, the accountancy uh, profession to be able to get their exams and so on. What you uh, would tend to, to do uh, also at some point, uh, not until 
however you've offered somebody a job and have said yes, uh, is you take up references. Uh, in other words, you write to their current employer uh, asking for information about this new recruit. Uh, many employers are reluctant to say anything subjective now, uh, like whether the employee was a good employee or whether they're honest. Uh, you might get it wrong. Uh, but you would hope that you would at least get uh, factual stuff, like when they joined, uh, what their role was there, what their final position was, uh, the title was, what maybe their salary was, and so on. So at least the factual stuff they put in their application for can be verified. Uh, work sampling, uh, often used uh, with, uh, say, designers. Uh, uh, how do you know whether somebody is actually very good at designing, let's say, clothing? Uh, well, get them to bring along some designs which they have made. How do you know whether somebody is going to be good at uh, formulating advertising slogans and advertising campaigns? Well, again, have them bring along uh, some of the work which they have done in the past, and you can judge, judge that. And finally, group selection methods. Uh, this is the real Rolls-Royce uh, selection method. Uh, typically, it will be taking a group of candidates away, uh, maybe for uh, two days, probably overnight accommodation. Uh, you give them a series of role plays uh, to be going through. You can give them a big, uh, a big uh, pile of uh, kind of reports and data. You ask them to, to kind of go through that as it was their in trade to prioritize and uh, so on. You get them to write reports, you get them to, to chair a meeting in, in turn, you get them to solve problems to see how well they communicate with uh, the other uh, 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 people on the, uh, uh, the selection uh, event and so on. And all the time they're being watched and judged uh, by uh, recruitment experts uh, to see who's going to maybe work well in a team, who's got good problem solving abilities and uh, so on. Uh, maybe how people uh, deal with objections to their idea, how they become persuasive of that their idea uh, is actually the right one. But that tends to be very expensive, uh, and these group selection methods uh, tend to be used uh, for higher level recruitment, maybe people being recruited on a kind of management trainee scheme, uh, where uh, it's very important for the company to, to get it right, they're going to invest a lot of money in these people in the future, uh, and they want to, 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 as best they can, guarantee they get the right candidate. Uh, within interviews, there are, again, there are uh, various uh, patterns. Uh, as it says, uh, frequently used, but uh, poor if not done uh, well. They have to be well structured, they have to be conducted by skilled people. Uh, they can be one to one. Uh, the one to many, like a panel, uh, so several people. It could be one to, to, to one and then one to one. It could be a series of interviews there. Uh, and then uh, you can also have uh, essentially selection panels uh, where you could be having maybe half a dozen people sitting in front of you, uh, some of whom could be taking the lead and asking questions, some of whom could be observing and taking notes and uh, and so on. It can be quite difficult that one if you're one to one, that at least the other person's having to kind of think simultaneously with you. If it's one to many, uh, as you're answering one person's question, another person will be thinking of the next question to, to ask you, uh, and it become become quite uh, quite demanding, uh, perhaps. Once you have been successfully recruited, uh, or there's the uh, uh, selection testing, which we have we've been through this uh, year, uh, undergoing formal tests to identify your uh, competence and attributes, psychometric proficiency, intelligence, and aptitude, which we're talking about. Once you have got the, the right person or a person selected, once they've said yes, once you've got the references back from a current employer, there seems to be uh, no lies in their application, they seem to be telling the truth. Uh, then they will join your organization. And the first thing that uh, we uh, would normally do is you have induction training. Now, training here, the, the, the general word training, uh, means very 
specific training for your current role. It's immediately going to be needed. So you could be given training in Excel because when you start doing your job, you're going to be using Excel kind of every day. Um, uh, when you first join an organization, you'll be given something called induction training. This is to make you feel welcome and productive as soon as possible. In some jobs, it would simply be uh, introducing you to your colleagues, uh, giving you a log on for the IT system, uh, showing you where the kitchens are, the lavatory is, showing where the fire exits are and, uh, and so on. Uh, showing you how to work the phone system uh, and in simple jobs you're kind of ready to ready to go after about half an hour in other jobs it's going to be much longer if you were recruited uh, into a firm of accountants to be an auditor uh, the induction training could be a couple of weeks because they have to train you up on the uh, documentation how you actually do an audit and then uh, quite often every year there's going to be another some sort of training session or maybe they don't wait a year. The, the, the tricky thing about a lot of training is that the courses come at the wrong time. You have to wait six months on the course or else you have a course and you don't use that for another six months. You've forgotten about it. Uh, and this is where uh, in uh, some organizations they make great use of what's sometimes called CBT, which is computer-based training. Uh, or sometimes called on-demand training. So rather than having to wait on a, a training course being run, uh, you're sitting at your computer, you can bring up a, a kind of video or a, a kind of interactive training course and so on, and get the training just, just in time, just as you need it. The word development uh, is uh, used uh, more in a long-term sense. We talked about personal development plans and we had a, a feeling in the development plan of how you were going to be kind of progressing through the organization in your career there. So uh, development for, for people uh, is a less specific form of, I suppose, instruction and its training. Uh, <clears throat> you don't necessarily need it for your current role uh, but uh, they're really saying, you know, a good manager ought to have this ability, this skill uh, in the armory. So if you're recruited, a big part, if you're promoted to a managerial position, uh, it is probable that at some time in the future, but maybe not for a little while, we can't say when, uh, that you might have to make a presentation uh, to staff or a presentation to customers. And so as part of your development training, they might send you on a kind of public speaking course. Or they might say at some point you're going to have to be doing uh, interviews of uh, uh, potential new employees. Let's send you on an interviewing course or a negotiating course and so on. It's not that you need it just kind of now, uh, but it, this should be part of the, the skill set, if you like, of any, any particular manager. Uh, education, uh, this is... Uh, third uh, phrase here, if you like, I think you just have to, uh, the term rather, you just have to kind of know what the definition is here. Knowledge uh, acquired gradually through learning and instruction. Uh, so education, knowledge acquired gradually through learning and instruction. 